Shaban is right before Ramadan. What should we do? What should we do in Shaban? For example, if you had an exam coming up next month, what would you do this month? Study, prepare. If you had a marathon that you were going to run in next month, what are you going to do this month? Okay. So all of the hadith that you, so these are the that's what you're supposed to do in Shaban. This is what we all should be doing in the month of Shaban. Okay. So this is about how much to do the practice. Okay. This is about how much to practice. So uh, Imam al nawawi the, the title of the, uh, of the section is Bab al Nahi'an Taqaddama Ramadan Bisawm al Ba'd al Nisf Shaban. Basically, you should not fast back to back at the start of Ramadan. So you can't continue to fast and then Ramadan hits and then you're fasting again. Take a break. Take a break between your preparation of fasting during Shaban and the start of Ramadan. You need to take a break. Is, does that confuse people? So ha, don't fast. Don't fast a few days before Ramadan. Actually, some of the hadith says don't fast after the first half of Shaban. So after the 15th of Shaban, stop fasting. Okay. Or let's look at it now. Okay. I just wanted to give you some context. So. Um, Abu Huraira narrates that Nabi, an Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam قال لا يتقدمن أحدكم He's very very firm and this is a متفق عليه حديث Super authentic hadith, okay? One of the highest categories. Um, do not follow up any one of you Ramadan بصوم يوم أو يومين by one or two days. Leave a gap of one or two days before Ramadan starts. Don't fast those two days. Illa an yakuna rajulun, except, he said, except if you are a person, kana yasumu sawmahu fal yasum dalik al yom. That, for example, let's say Ramadan starts on, uh, actually, actually, let let me give you a simple example and then a Ramadan example, okay? Just so that it's clear to you. Should you say, oh, tomorrow, just, just, just because you feel like it. I have energy today. Let me fast Juma. Should you fast Juma? No. Rasulullah said, do not single out Juma for fasting. You shouldn't fast the day of Juma. It's Yom al Eid. It's a day of Eid. It's a weekly Eid for Muslims. Okay? All right. Um, also, for example, um, the actual day of Eid, either after Ramadan or uh, uh, Eid uh, Al-Adha, you're not supposed to fast on that day. You're not. Okay. We know that. Now, let's say you have a habit. You have a habit to fast every other day. You're one of those super pious people. You have a habit of fasting every other day. Now, while you're fasting every sing, every other day, it, that that day you're fasting happens to be Jum'ah. You, should you not fast? No. Rasulullah now explains. He's giving you a concession. If you are a person that is fasting a particular day out of habit, then go ahead and fast. Make sense? Now, if you're fasting every other day, and it's a day before Ramadan or two days before Ramadan, should you not fast? No. Rasulullah said, if you, if that's part of your habit and practice, then do it. Is it clear? Yeah. But it needs to be your, not a, just a Shaban practice. It needs to be your weekly practice. Does that make sense? Not just a Shaban specific practice. It has to be your ritual. It has to be your ritual. Okay. That, is that clear? Everybody? Okay. So uh, clearly, clearly, this is a muttafaq ali hadith, a very authentic hadith. There needs to be a gap between Shaban and Ramadan. Let's look at the next one in Tirmidhi. Not as authentic, but a little bit, but it's still authentic. Qal Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, la tasumu qabla Ramadan. Do not fast before Ramadan. 
Sumu li ru'yatihi wa aftiru li ru'yatihi. Okay, only fast between the two moons, essentially. Fa in halat dunahu ghayatun fa akmilu thalatina yoman. Anyway, you complete the 30 days. We already looked at that. Uh, yes. Now, this is important. Abu Huraira said, Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ida baqiya nisfun min Sha'ban. When half of Sha'ban remains, meaning from 16th of Ramadan onward, I'm sorry, six, Barakallahu feekum. 16th of Sha'ban onward, Ida baqiya nisfun min Sha'ban, fala tusum. Then do not fast. Okay. So now we have two ahadith. One is saying, leave a gap of at least day or two. Here it's saying, don't fast the second half of Ramadan. Okay, so Rasulullah actually is encouraging us what? Don't go overboard. Okay? Um, prepare, but enjoy your iftar. Enjoy your not fasting. Iftar meaning not fasting. Okay? And then you enjoy Ramadan. If you want, so if we need to prep for Ramadan, we better do it in the first 15 days of Shaban, ideally. I would not recommend you fast beyond 15 days, but beyond the first half, okay? Uh, just just me in general. I would not recommend you do that. Uh, but if, if, if you can, I mean, there's no harm in it. it it's okay. As long as you don't uh, join your fast with Ramadan. Join your fast of Shaban with Ramadan. Clear? Clear. Okay. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. And we all should be doing that. We all should be practicing right now. Because otherwise, that first day of Ramadan is, is going to be extremely difficult. Even the second day, maybe even the third day, Sarawih is going to be extremely difficult. And basically the energy, you know, Ramadan, as Sheikh Nunawi says, Ramadan is a guest. Okay? It's going to come and then it's going to go. And you're not going to honor the guest. Uh, you need to honor the guest. You've got to prepare for your guest's arrival. So let's do that in Shabbat. I'm not as eloquent as Sheikh Nenevi. Okay.